Yo, so I've been coding on Mac for years and been making videos on this channel for a little while now, reviewing MacBooks and talking about my experiences programming. I'm constantly getting questions about my setup and because I like to change things around so often, I thought it was about time I made another video going over what's on my Mac. I work as a software engineer, build a SaaS startup for creators on the side, and make these videos, so I think I have a unique way that I use my Mac every day. Every tool or app I mention here is something that fits into my workflow and helps me work more efficiently. If you're a developer yourself or just someone who wants to be more productive with their Mac, I hope this video will be helpful. So when I'm coding, I switch between two different editors. The first is Cursor, which at this point I've mentioned it many times on the channel, and I think most devs are aware of it, but basically it's a fork VS Code with a ton of AI features built on top of it. Since I started using it sometime last year, it's gone from simply being a nicer autocomplete to an agent that can write code and implement new functionality for you. The main reason I started using it was for those tab autocompletes, which have only gotten better with time. As I'm writing front-end TypeScript code for my Next.js app, it will guess what I'm trying to write and with time has gotten pretty accurate. If I'm typing a new component, it can automatically import it. It will also jump around within the current file to delete unused variables, or even go between files if, for example, you're changing a function name. This is probably my favorite use case of AI in programming because you're not just letting it think for you, although there are times where I get annoyed at it and disable it, and then notice myself through the copilot pause, which is embarrassing, honestly. There's also the chat tab, which I've really come around to. At first, I didn't see the use for it and preferred talking with Claude in the browser, but with Cursor having context of your code base, asking it questions about how I should structure a new feature is very helpful. I tend to stick with ask mode so that I'm still taking the time to understand what I'm writing, but for certain tasks, I do let the agent rip if I'm clear on the requirements. Also, if you prompt it correctly and check the output, the results can be quite good. Now, outside of the editor, Cursor has been working on background agents which lets you spin up a cursor agent to write code even if you're not using your Mac. For example, I was at the gym the other day and saw a Slack notification about an error in production and I simply tagged cursor asking it to explore the issue and resolve it. This was just a simple one line code change the cursor was easily able to fix and then I could create and merge a new PR from that. Pretty crazy. Now back to the editor, because it's based on VS Code, I'm still using a lot of the same extensions I've had for years. Just to name a few, GitLens is great to quickly see who's changed a file in your code base. ErrorLens highlights errors in your code so you can easily catch them. And Tailwind IntelliSense lets you see the underlying CSS classes for any Tailwind classes you write. I'm always switching my theme around, but at the moment it's Aura Dark, and my file icons are the symbol icons. I'm also using the Dank Mono font because I think it looks a bit better than the default. Now, I love Cursor, but I really only use it for front-end work, so when I'm building my Next.js app, it's perfect. Otherwise, I use the JetBrains editors for basically everything else. Goland is what I use to write Go, which is my preferred backend language and what I use for my startup's API. The JetBrains editors are a lot heavier than VS Code, but things like the debugger and out-of-the-box support for your specific language makes me keep coming back to them. There are significantly less customizations and extensions, but part of that is that so much functionality comes out of the box compared to VS Code, though that's mainly because this is a proper IDE. That said, among the few plugins I use, Git Toolbox acts like Git Lens, Inspection Lens is like Air Lens, and Key Promoter X yells at me anytime I miss a shortcut. I'm using the Capuchin Macchiato theme and the Dank Mono font. Now, my terminal is Ghosty, and it's a super fast and lightweight terminal emulator. It's built to need as little configuration as possible, and I found that to be mostly true. I did customize the icon and change the theme, but otherwise, I've not not touch the defaults. I like this much better than iTerm2, and for the most part warp as well, but I do miss Ladder's AI features and autocomplete. As I'm in the terminal, I edit files with NeoVim, specifically I got set up with NVChad. This automatically installed various plugins like a file tree. I'm still such a noob with Vim keybinds, but it's great to jump around a file so much quicker than normal. Vim is crazy because almost any action you want to do, Vim probably has a shortcut for it. I've downloaded the NeoVim extension in both Cursor and Goland in an attempt to get you used to the Vim binds, but I still don't take full advantage of them. So when I'm testing my API endpoints, I switched over to Yak from
from Postman, and I'm so glad I did. Yak is a local first and super lightweight API client. You don't have to log in and it's also open source, so it gives that peace of mind that my API keys are safe. They also have made it keyboard navigable, so there's shortcuts to add new endpoints and jump around, along with a command K menu to take quick actions. I don't use these two features often, but you can paste a curl command and automatically pre-fill the details, and also connect a Git repository to save your endpoints. Now, I of course mentioned cursor, and that's where a lot of my AI uses these days, but I still like to use the Claude web app, and it's the only other AI subscription that I pay for. When I'm building a new feature for my SaaS creator Kiwi, which is a link shortener that automatically tracks conversions, I often talk through this scope with Claude and try to better understand how to approach the architecture. By the way, if you're interested in seeing the tools I use to build my apps, I've put together a list of my solo founder tools, which have been super helpful. I'll leave a link to that in the description. When you take time to prompt AI well and give it a lot of context about what you're thinking, the output can be very impressive, though typing that out is a pain in the ass. I started using Super Whisper a few months ago and it's been blowing my mind how good it is. They recently reached out to me and then I asked if they wanted to sponsor this video because I've been liking the app so much and they agreed, so thanks to them. Super Whisper is an AI text-to-speech app that both dictates what you're saying, but also lets you run local and cloud post processing models to clean up the text, fix your grammar, and format it properly for any given context. While macOS has built-in dictation, it's nowhere near as good as what Super Whisper can do. You can set up different modes so that the AI behaves in a different way for different use cases. For example, there's a mail mode that will format your dictated text as an email with a sign-off, so you can simply speak to your email clients without having to type a word. You can also create custom modes, specify which voice and post-processing model you want to use, and give it a custom prompt to follow so it works perfectly for your use case. What I've been using it a ton for is talking with the cursor chat or Claude in the web app and explaining to it what task I want to complete or a question I have without touching my keyboard. I want to give a quick demo to show why it's really nice to work with Super Whisper. Hey Claude, I'm a... Uh building an app that lets you shorten links to your email list or digital products and um, automatically track conversions. What's the best way to onboard new user? What's the best way to onboard new users so it's really easy? Super Whisper took my dictated text and ran a language model on it to clean up what I had said, taking out the ums, the ahs, and even when I messed up at the end and had to repeat something. I highly recommend checking out Super Whisper, so I'll leave a link in the description where you can download it for free. Now, when it comes to productivity apps, they can get very overwhelming, but I've been trying to find more options that don't always require a description or better yet, are open source. Ice is a menu bar organization app similar to Bartender that's completely open source. It works really well and is super performant. The menu bar can very quickly get cluttered, so I keep as few items visible by default and then hide the rest. Then whenever I need to access something within the menu bar, I just click the ice button to reveal the hidden menu. Itzikel is a calendar app that lives in the menu bar and I mainly use it to quickly check what the current date is or look at a future date and figure out what day of the week that is. The next app is essential for any Mac I use and that's Raycast. This was an app that I initially downloaded as just a replacement for macOS Spotlight Search, but it's much more powerful than that. Even with the improvements in the new macOS that Spotlight Search is getting, I still think Redcast makes a ton of sense. There's a lot of extensions which let you interact with third-party apps all from your keyboard. It's heavily focused on keyboard shortcuts and lets you bind system actions, as well as opening applications to custom hotkeys. I've set up Control plus any one of the 10 digits to open all of the apps that I'm jumping through throughout the day. I cannot tell you how much of a difference this has made. My next most used feature is clipboard history, which I have a hockey setup for that I can instantly pull up my clipboard history, search through it, and paste things I copied hours ago into my current app. This is so clutch and there's been several times where having my clipboard history of some code solution from a month ago has saved my ass. It's also just nice as you're reading through documentation and copying multiple things at once, you don't have to worry about overriding your clipboard. Raycast also has AI built in so that you can ask a question right from the menu. For a while, you needed a pro subscription to access AI, but recently they let you bring your own API key, which for me made it not make sense to even pay for the subscription anymore. Another app that helps me fly 
drive through Mac OS with my keyboard is Home Row, which is also developed by the developer of Super Whisper. It basically lets you set a hotkey to then display keystrokes over your current application's UI so you can perform mouse clicks without leaving your keyboard. Now, the web browser I've been using for a little while now is Zen, which is a fork of Firefox to focus on simplicity and design. I used Arc for a while, but ended up switching to Zen, and I love it because it has a very similar UX. It's still in an alpha state, I believe, so you do have to deal with bugs, but those aside, I'm a huge fan of Zen. The sidebar is what I love the most, and the fact that you can close it up. There's also Zen mods that are like extensions, but specifically made for Zen, so you can customize it to your liking. Honestly, the only thing I don't like is that it's Firefox, because their add-ons are significantly worse than Chrome. I have seen Dia, which is a new browser from the browser company, and I downloaded it, but haven't really spent much time with it. After the whole Arc situation, I'm not all that excited or confident that much will happen with it, so for now, I'm sticking with Zen. Now, Notion is the app that I use to write my YouTube scripts, newsletter, and plan almost everything within my business. We all know what it is, so I won't ponder on it for very long, but I've been using Notion for years and just love how flexible it is. I set up databases for my content and have templates so that I can easily plan out new content or ideas. I don't use Notion AI very much, but the times I have, it's definitely nice to clean up text and ideate. Now at work, we use Slack to communicate within the company, but I've started using it for my own projects, mainly integrating with tools like my error monitoring service, cursor, and tally forms. I'm so used to responding to Slack notifications that it's a very convenient place to notify myself about new form submissions, errors in my code, and to spin up new cursor agents. Now, when I'm creating screen recordings for my videos, I use Screen Studio, which is a fantastic Mac screen recorder. It automatically follows your mouse cursor and zooms in on your selections to create more engaging videos. The automatic edits are usually good enough to instantly export, but their built-in editor is nice to make any quick tweaks I want. Now, for taking screenshots, I use Shotter, and it's the best macOS screenshot tool that I've personally found. It's free to use for the most part, but there's a paid version that's a lifetime license that I decided to buy. You can set up shortcuts to quickly OCR text, snap a section on your screen, or an entire window. You can then edit the photo to blur sensitive info and mark it up. Now, for the photos I occasionally share and my thumbnails, I use both Lightroom and Photoshop in combination. Lightroom is where I make my initial edits to fix the colors and exposure of an image, and then I bring it directly into Photoshop to make any adjustments. Things like touching up and removing things for photos and adding text to the image is most of what I do. Anytime I'm creating a graphic, like for example, the images I use for my Creator Kiwi blog posts, I use Figma. I honestly use Figma for things that other people may use Canva for, but I've just found that Figma is really nice to use and I'm comfortable with it. I actually don't do any UI design in here. I always go straight to coding, but it's great for creating wallpapers and other digital graphics. So that's been what's on my Mac as a software engineer. These are the apps that I use within my workflow daily to write better code and make these videos. If you enjoyed this video, you'll want to watch this one next where I talk about how I'd get ahead of 99% of developers trying to learn to code if I was starting today. Thanks for watching and take care.